some point, if we have time, draw some connections between the two films. But Ines, I wanted you uh, to talk us through um, uh, the development of this film and this story, since, as I mentioned, you wrote the screenplay as well. Um, and it seems to me from the two films that we have shown, um, uh, your narrative films, because you've made a lot of documentaries as well, I want to mention that and give credit to your uh, veteran work as, a, as a, a documentary filmmaker, but it seems in your narrative work you're really interested in contemporary stories, in stories of uh, today's Sarajev or today's Bosnia uh, uh, and intergenerational uh, relationships. So uh, tell us a little bit what drew you to this particular story. Yes, as you mentioned, uh, uh, as I uh, as I thought about my first film, because I was waiting for my first film, uh, Our Everyday Lives, uh, for so long. Uh, I was uh, writing several uh, scripts about the war because uh, we also, uh, we all in Bosnia have this um, uh, need to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to tell the story about the war. But uh, after 20 years after the war, I realized that I don't want to talk about uh, the war anymore because my colleagues make many films about this topic. So I realized that uh, what is uh, important for me is what was the con what is the consequences of the war. So my first story was our everyday life about uh, family in uh, uh, Sarajevo 2015. And uh, after this film, uh, I was thinking about the new second film. And you, as you know, uh, every author have this uh, problem with second film, uh, especially when you have very good, uh, successful first film. So I was struggling with me, what will be my second film and what is the maybe topic that the uh, audience want to see or uh, festivals wanted to see because as an author, I was very under pressure and I was talking with my producer and husband, Alem, and he said to me, no, you have don't you don't have to think about what other people want to see you you have to follow your dream and to make a topic what you really want so uh something what i wanted to uh, tell the story uh, through the movie is uh, this the the topic about adopted child because I have my son, with, with, uh, he's uh, from my previous marriage and I was in, the, uh, in, in his uh, time when he was in, in, in uh, puberty. I have some, uh, uh, we have some difficult time in his, uh, um, uh, as he was growing up and uh, I was thinking about him and uh, I was thinking about me as a mother and uh, as I made some uh, uh, mistakes in my choices in my life. So I was uh, really, uh, how to, to, to say, forced to make this film because it was my need to make this story. So uh, I make a story about adopted child in the family who afterwards got a biological child. And I wanted to, to tell a story how this adopted child uh, feel, what is uh, with his emotion, how, uh, how his um, uh, position in the family impact in the, in the parent's life. And uh, in my story, everybody is uh, right. Nobody uh, is guilty. Everybody make what they think that is right. Nobody have intention to be uh, bad or, or, or not good. So I, I really wanted to, to make this uh, as, a, as a film story. And it, that was my need to, to make this story. Thank you for, for your answer, for already opening up a lot of uh, venues for conversation that I, uh, if we have time, want to revisit. Um, uh, but I also uh, uh, want to point out that it's really important what you uh, just said with regards to the second film and the challenge of making a second film, especially once a filmmaker's first film is successful. And actually someone who 
who uh, is looking at women's film history in particular in the region and more broadly, it's more often the case for women filmmakers as well, that even though they make amazing debut films, the chance to make another film never really comes or the support doesn't come. So in a moment, we'll talk about that, mounting uh, the opportunity. Uh, but I did also want to um, ask you uh, or just comment on the fact that you said uh, that there was some um, impulse to make a war film uh, or a film about the war, which has been the predominant theme and unfortunately still continues to be. And there's a reason for that, because the region is still kind of uh, processing what happened. And like you said, there's a lot of amazing films that have been made about the war by our regional filmmakers and continues to be the case. But uh, for us as the programmers of the festival, we often get the comment from our audiences that ask about why not more contemporary stories and why not more stories about everyday life in contemporary Bosnia? Why always war? And in your film, in this film and in the previous one, like you pointed out, there is a still a sense of the war trauma and the aftermath, but you're still very much clearly focused on the contemporary experience. Yes, uh, uh, we, we've often forgotten that we are uh, 25 years after the war and the war is, but the war is still so uh, uh, intense uh, uh, in our lives uh, and we cannot uh, disconnect from this topic and it is very uh, difficult for the authors to make this uh, measurement how to make a topic uh, that is not only about the war, but that is uh, also the contemporary story. And I always think that the author have to make a film or, or any artistic uh, uh, art at all uh, uh, from the need about the story you have to, 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 uh, to tell. So, um, from my point of view, because I'm documentarist also, I, I make documentaries, uh, I, I found out that uh, is so many artifacts still alive in Bosnia and in the, in the region and about the war you can much more better uh, uh, tell a story through documentaries because you, you still have uh, uh, people that, are that, that uh, was... Uh, uh, witnesses of the war. So why that I have to invent the story about the war when I can uh, shoot the real people and they real story? Because I think that is much more harder that you really uh, hear the people this kind of story uh, than I can imagine or shoot with the, with the um, actors. Because it was very, uh, this war was so horrible that I cannot imagine to recreate the, the same uh, emotion as the war itself. This is my opinion, of course, uh, because I'm from here and I know how, how we are living here and what is for us the war. Because Alem and I was for four years under the siege in Sarajevo and I cannot... Um, uh, imagine how to make the film about that because it is too close to me. This is too close to me. Uh, my father uh, write, uh, wrote uh, the war diary and it was, he, he was uh, writing from beginning of the war and he, was man, he, he meant that he will finish with the finishing of the war and uh, with Dayton agreement, he realized that the war is not finished and he, he uh, uh, write it, write it and write it. And uh, in 1999, he stopped writing because he don't have any energy and he died after he stopped. And I never, never read this, uh, this book because even it is our, uh, our history, even it is the history of our family, because he, he wrote all the facts that we as a family have uh, during the war. I never, I can never uh, read it, no page, because it is too close to me, too emotional to me. So I was uh, uh, making the documentaries about the uh, war and effects of, of the war, uh, like uh, 
talking with the rape woman and I cannot imagine how uh, this story can be more um, powerful than this woman that she's talking in, in the camera what she uh, was uh, what uh, what was happened to her so this was my statement like uh, like author and uh, maybe i'm not right of course my colleague finished the asmala she she finished this film uh, about uh, genocide in srebrenica and i saw the film and of course we all was like uh, bittered after the film and uh, I think that this film is very important and we needed this film, but uh, I as author could not, cannot make this kind of, of story. Maybe it's the film from the abroad, not for our domestic uh, audience. Okay. So this is the reason I make this kind of film or, or film uh, how we live today because everything in our life now is uh, uh, about war because of the war and we still feel it. So when I uh, tell the story about contemporary Sarajevo, you can feel the war in every spot of this film. Absolutely. And before I turn it over to uh, Amir for his questions, I, I just wanted to follow up uh, the highlighting of the documentary filmmaking um, and still having uh, uh, individuals who have gone f firsthand through these experiences and documenting that is an in in incredibly important archival work for posterity, of course. Um, but uh, it now uh, I understand uh, from what you've just said um, how in, in a way for you, war is treated in your uh, narrative films through a, uh, a, the next generation. It's, it's kind of removed through the younger individuals who are just kind of learning about these stories, especially in The Sun, who refer to some uh, suffering and loss in the war, but still do not have the first-hand experience. So it's kind of a transgenerational trauma. But I will, I will turn it over to Amir, who has questions. It's a it's a it's a great segue also to something that I wanted to ask and you know as you just mentioned also the difficulty of really uh, showing a lot of this on screen or processing it on screen but what's also obvious in your film what I thought was very interesting is that um, we have this intergenerational conflict also happening that we have a younger generation that understands both the past and the war and the present so entirely differently than you know their parents or or those that we consider to be adults also in the film so i would like you maybe to comment uh, if you could comment on and i think also both uh, uh, ulix and snajan also can chime in uh, how is it to work with younger actors considering these circumstances and to try to communicate a, a very specific sort of ideas that you have envisioned as a director surrounding these topics uh, specifically? So um, when we talk about the sun and the young actors from the sun, uh, I chose uh, to work not with the um, uh, school uh, children, but I choose to make uh, my choice on academy, uh, the, the actors who nearly finished the academy because I was thinking that is very um, heavy role for for the main character, and that I don't want to play with with some child f f for from casting. So I chose the 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 main actor. He was then uh, the third uh, year on academy of performing art, and I think that uh, what, that was helpful because. He himself uh, was uh, in, this in that training process of the acting, and also he is aware of the situation where he is living. His father is also actor, and uh, he he is really play almost himself because as as a young uh, boy he he. Go, he went through this similar situation. Not he was not adopted, but 
uh, have some problem in the family. And when I spoke with his father, uh, the, the actor, Izudin Bajerovic, he told me, this is him. And I feel this on, on when I, I saw him in some student film, I realized that this is the character, this is the actor I really see in this role because he's so like um, hot and, uh, uh, but it, like a stone in, in front, but uh, emotional in, in his inner. So with him, I was really, uh, re really uh, satisfied how he understand this role because he had his uh, 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 private uh, experience uh, of this kind of problem in family. And it was easier with him to make this. The other, the other actors, uh, young actors, uh, uh, they are really from, um, how to say, they, they uh, lived in Sarajevo and uh, after the premiere, many parents uh, talked to me and they, don't real, they didn't realize that Sarajevo is such a city and that you have such opportunities and the drugs and everything. Maybe in mm -hmm. other, yeah, yeah, in other, other city in the world, it's normal, but in Sarajevo, like, um, how to say, it was a small city before the war, and it wasn't like that. And now the, the parents, my generation, we, are, we, we, we were raised in absolutely different kind of country. And now my generation facing uh, their child in absolutely different kind of city. So this is also one of the topic that I wanted to, to raise how, how we as a generation cannot understand what our children doing when we, they are out somewhere and they don't uh, tell us what was going on. So this is that, that was really shocking to many parents that, uh, that uh, saw the film and they approached to me and wrote to me how they shocked that we have such a thing in our, in our uh, uh, city. So it was shocking to me how the parents are so naive also. So... <laughs> I, 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 I was really amazed with, uh, with uh, our young uh, uh, actors, and I think that they done a very good job. Thank you. Thank you, Ines. Um, uh, I, and I, I absolutely... Uh, I just wanted I to add something to, to yes, what Ines just said, if I can. Please. Yeah. Yes. Imagine, go ahead. Yes. Uh, that's definitely one part of the story, but it's really important to say that considering how many movies are made in the whole region, you know, and how many opportunities the young actors have, you know, and uh, I was really amazed how they, uh, uh, how they, how passionate they were about this story and how engaged all of them were and how professional they were. And I have to say that uh, that's definitely uh, a sign of, uh, of, of desire for young actors to tell, like, uh, to, to be part of these kind of stories that we say, that we tell and share, of course. Thank you, Snajana. I don't know, Ulix, if you if you wanted to add to that, also working someone also who's been working in uh, before, obviously, and working for years uh, um, in in film in the in the Balkans, in the region, in Bosnia as well. Um, how is it to work with, with with younger actors who have been obviously uh, subjected to very different kinds of uh, politics, uh, very different kind of social pressures? Uh, and so on, if, if you wanted to also add a little bit about your terrible. experience. Terrible. It was terrible. They made me understand how old I am. I mean, in, in, <laughs> Ines's, in Ines's previous film, I was the son. In this one, I, I was the father. No, joking aside, I mean, you know, as Ines said, she chose, you know, a group of young 
actors that were absolutely amazing. You know, first they are, you know, really nice, polite, well-behaved, you know, young, young human beings. And then on top of it, they were great, great professionals. And, you know, it's, it's very interesting and refreshing to sort of, to be, because... You know, what, what we do in front of the camera, we exchange energies. And it was very interesting to, you know, um, of course, uh, uh, you know, Ines and Alem, our parents, Nezhan and myself, our parents. Uh, but yeah, this, this, this was um, the first time for me that I, you know, that I play a father in Ines' previous film. I was the son and actually, you know, the relationship that I had uh, with my father in that film was, you know, probably the main uh, uh, reason and the most exciting reason about uh, accepting that part and in this film it's the same thing but it's you know in the opposite direction it's you know uh, the relationship with my uh, adopted boy so yeah it was very uh, gratifying I mean and it's when you are you know when you are and of course these are I mean you have some young actors that have already some you know an established track record and they're already comfortable in their own skin but <clears throat> the actress that Ines had chosen this was you know especially for Dino and even the younger son uh, this was their first experience and you know I mean I'm nervous to this day every time I have to be in front of the camera <coughs> as if as if it was the first time and then I can <clears throat> really remember well how I felt when I was their age. And you can sense that, you know, vulnerability and, and, and fragility and, you know, uh, it, it was just a, but the, a nice the same experience. Time, yeah, but at the same time, <coughs> at the same time, they were so open, they were very open to suggestions, you know, and that's also something that, you know, this, the, the acting work comes with a lot of uh, vanity and insecurity and doubts, which is normal, you know. And when you have your first role, uh, it's probably tripled, you know. And, uh, and you know, during the process, we, 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 couldn't, we couldn't sense that. So uh, maybe they were hiding it very well, but they were actually open, you know, to, to, to collaboration, to suggestions, and, and that, that's something that, that's also really important. This uh, talking about casting and uh, choosing actors uh, is a good segue for me uh, to ask uh, not only Ines uh, about her decision to uh, have an actual uh, real life couple, um, Ulix and Snežana play a married couple in the film. And Ulix, of course, was in uh, Ines's uh, feature length narrative debut, Our Everyday Life. And as he just noted, uh, he was the son in that film. And I see actually, by the way, a lot of mirroring between the two films where the son, uh, the son's relationship with the father in that film played the father played by Emir Haji Hafiz Begovic. And here Emir um, is the father-in-law uh, but there's still some, a, a certain kind of generational movement to the next generation while these other complications remain, in, including some mirroring in the bathroom scenes. I remember the memorable bathroom scene in our yeah. Yeah. life. couple in this film. So maybe, Ines, you can talk about your decision to not just cast the young actors, but the, the two actors we have here. And as we confirmed just before our conversation, actually, Snezhna and Ulix, this, this has been your first time appearing together on screen. You've worked together in theater before. So uh, tell us a little bit about what that experience was like for you, sharing the screen. So you want us first to talk or you want first Ines to respond to what you just asked? In, in whatever order, Ulix and Sancho, do you want to take it first and then Ines can speak? Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, that's okay. Well, yeah, it was really, uh, I can say that uh, it, it was, was re really bad. <laughs> it was smooth, you know. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it was so easy, you know, because uh, at one point I was thinking like, you know, oh, is it going to, is it are we going to reveal a lot of private stuff, you know, playing like, a, like, a, like parents? But uh, I had to say uh, that the process is always the same. 
You know, it's like with every colleague, you need to discuss things. You need to agree about your approach. You know, uh, it, it's at the end, in the end, it's the craft and you have to follow, you know, your director, uh, her input, input in this, uh, uh, you know, in the whole process. So um, I think we both understood that. And, you know, it was like a really like a professional co collaboration. Sometimes I would say it would be a little bit easier for both of us because we spent uh, more time together at home and we were able to go through our lives and discuss some scenes and approach and, you know, so. But uh, other than that, I, I, I could say that, you know, it was, it, it looked like very easy, you know, and I was glad that Ines uh, uh, put us together in, in her movie, you know, because uh, for me, it was like the whole process was pleasurable. I'm glad to hear. I, I was so excited about it the second I heard about the pairing when Ines told me about it. But Ulix appears to uh, have a, a slightly different experience. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, both with Snezhana and Ines. No, I'm joking. Uh, I mean, it was, um, uh, you know, of course that people, you know, that this is sort of an attractive people to, all, you know, you two together. But uh, the, the truth is that that's totally irrelevant. And, you know, that both of us, what we, you know, we would have participated in this movie each separately if, you know, there was another partner that was, <clears throat> that was, you know, if, if it was chosen because we were attracted to the, you know, to the story. I mean, you know, it's, and this, this is something that, you know, that not only, to, you know, I previously worked with Ines and, you know, I hope to work with her again, she does this, um, you know, very, even though she was saying that, you know, she can't deal with, uh, you know, with the past in a sense of that war was too close to, you know, that it feels too close, you know, that might very well be the truth, but I think that she does something that is braver in my, you know, in, in my opinion, she does, uh, or she has done with both of these films, uh, you know, she, she tries to, Tell the stories that are that are deeply, deeply personal, and maybe even more personal than you know, uh, than war as a societal sort of catastrophe and and a group, uh, very often a, a, a group uh, uh, memory and trauma and recollection. Uh, so this 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 uh, braveness in her approach. Uh, to you know, in choosing subjects, it, it's something you know that uh, that has been attracting me, and you know, Snezhana can of course speak for herself, but I think that she feels very similar. Uh, and we, as a parent, because Ines and us, we are sort of you know uh, the same generation, and even though we uh, we live on separate continents, but we can very much relate um, in any way. Uh, to the you, you know to the to the issues of you know being a parent raising a child of course we spend a lot of time in you know whether it's in Belgrade or Sarajevo in region in general so uh, and we care about what's going on over there very much uh, and uh, the 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 issue of young people being without role models without appropriate role models. This is not an, ex and, you know, regardless if the, if the kid is, you know, adopted or not, but, you know, the, the issues and uh, fears and anxieties uh, and troubles that he goes through as, you know, as a young adult is not, it, it's something that is very common uh, and present through, you know, throughout the region. And we spoke about it uh, briefly, you know, on, on few uh, places where the film was shown and for me what was very and you know Ines said you know that she was while she was writing that she was reflecting maybe on certain things that she as a parent you know maybe have done wrong and this is this is this is where you know the the the, the reason and uh, the passion for you know for participating in this in this project comes because we can very much correlate and uh, and we feel that you know our generation 
uh, has held and should be accountable for a lot of what's going on with, you know, with our kids uh, now, nowadays. But yeah, I mean, we had a, how should I say, great experience working with each other, great experience working with a directing, producing couple. And, uh, but, but the main reason is the, is the story that she wanted to tell. Thank you for those uh, thoughts and uh, what you the terms you mentioned the co core being able to correlate to the issues I think is one of the really uh, most uh, effective in defining characteristics of Ines's work and it's exactly had to do with uh, with these are stories that a lot of ordinary people can relate to because it is about ordinary families and the precarious lives lived on so many levels and something that Ines said at the beginning which is um, all, all of them are flawed. Their uh, characters are both good and bad. There, there's a lot of gray areas. Everyone is struggling um, um, uh, to deal with the situation and the social structures and limitations around and the issues that are happening. Um, and, and all of that resonates with a lot of people. So um, and, uh, I'm really glad you highlighted that. And of course, I want to give Ines uh, the opportunity to comment on this before we have a question for Alem as well, uh, with regards to the casting decision when it comes to Snezhna and Ulix, and I think both of them have given uh, really insightful answers to this, but from your own perspective, how you saw uh, the process and, and uh, decisions behind it. Yeah, I, I must say, I'm, <laughs> as you can imagine, I'm, I'm absolutely emotional about my work. And I cannot work with people that I don't feel it. So uh, when I work with you, Ulix, on our first film, I absolutely know that he will be in my second film because I, I, I have this kind of uh, emotional, uh, how to say, I, I feel my actor, I feel, I, I have to be friend with them. I, I have to have some connection. So I think that Ulix and I have very, uh, how to say, fruitful work on our first film. And it was uh, really, I was amazed with his role. And uh, when I was uh, preparing this second film, I immediately know that he will be the, 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 the father because uh, actually, this is the third part of my stories because I have uh, uh, omnibus film, some other stories. Where is my short uh, film in, in, in uh, as a part of this omnibus was uh, the beginning of this third part story, where I have uh, the the parents, uh, which was also Emirhaj Hafizbegovic and. Uh, Jasna Barry, but uh, unfortunately in that moment I didn't know, I didn't know uh, Ulix and other uh, actor was in this role, but this is um, somehow the same character. In this uh, uh, omnibus it was, he was the young about 20s and in uh, some other stories about 30s. And now this character became parents it itself. So uh, when, when uh, I was thinking about the, the, the main uh, uh, char woman character for the mother, because we are like friends, we were, we were together in New York and Belgrade and Sarajevo Film Festival and talking to, it was absolutely like a natural thing that uh, Snezhana is uh, this uh, character and I see her. And when I talk something sometimes with, with our, my, our professionals from Sarajevo, they always have some comments like, I do, why uh, I take uh, for main roles uh, actor that they are not from Sarajevo. And I said, I, I, I really don't want to uh, explain this because I feel the both of actor as my original character in this film. And Sejana is absolutely perfect in this role. When I saw the film after some times and I, I was amazed how it's really as I wanted. And every part of this film is as I wanted. So after two years, I can say now that it was really good choice and that it is really perfect as I wanted. 
and I couldn't imagine other people to, to be in this role. So that is uh, how I feel. And I can, all, also, I can uh, only talk about my feelings, but because for me is art is feelings. And I, 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 everything what I do in, in films is how I feel. So this is uh, from, it, it is like absolutely normal for me. The Tulix and Zinjana was this Thank capital. You. Yes, and I also think that uh, thought in that time that something what they have private and intimate will come out in the film. And I think it's really uh, worked out. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ines. Yes. Um, I also uh, want to uh, say that I was happy to see my favorite Kazanjia in the film, Manufactura, across uh -huh. with Abdullah's store there. Every time I'm in Sarajevo, I go there and buy my little things to take back. Uh, I, will, I have a question for, for uh, Alan. Uh, what struck me uh, this time watching the film for the second time is once the credits roll, you come to the end and you realize, okay, so, oh, okay, your images, I know, I recognize the recognition, but then you realize that there are so many other partners, sponsors, co-founders, and the list is very long. And it covers almost the whole region as well, Montenegro, Macedonia, uh, Serbia, Croatia, etc. cetera. Um, and I was wondering if you could comment uh, a little bit more on um, the difficulties of producing work today, you're working as a producer, and specifically when you have a film like this that is very concerned with, with small stories that doesn't necessarily look to be a blockbuster that would be sold in, in, in so many different markets. Um, can you speak about uh, uh, your perspectives specifically as a producer uh, and orienting yourself in this kind of a environment? Uh, in, in Bosnia, uh, it doesn't have a, a big budget for, for a national fund uh, in Bosnia, and uh, we have a only we got only for two films per year. Uh, we have a small money for two films, and uh, we must uh, find some co-producer co uh, 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 in, in ex-Yugoslav country who is. Uh, 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 close to our language and our mental mentality and uh, that uh, first time it's uh, 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 on our film uh, Montenegro have a foundation we are applying we are got the in Montenegro fund and uh, also we uh, have a traditional partner in Croatia that is Denka Gold uh, in Slovenia have a, a new partner Sonia and uh, rock and new, new one young producer couples and uh, 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 we met in in Eave, uh, um, Irina she is uh, from Romania and uh, she is uh, uh, come last in, in our our film and uh, uh, this is maybe a small small film for for uh, big cinematography but is uh, for, for our perspective perspective it's a, bi a big film uh, because we have a uh, uh, too many locations uh, we have a uh, uh, five partners and uh, etc and uh, we must do that uh, with uh, many partners and uh, you know with uh, all all a uh, big crew from abroad, not from Bosnia, and uh, also we we do doesn't have all all uh, all stuff in Bosnia. We doesn't we, we don't have some some uh, uh, I don't know how to sell professionals for for some you know it's a, because we are a small cinematography country actually, and that that is that that, that is reason because we we, we must capskaj uh, uh, Import. Import some professionals here, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. only for films, and that, uh, that, that's it. 
It seems like it's really one of those situations where we uh, have to, um, where, where these films cannot be made unless they're really kind of international cooperations, which was not really the case if you think about, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago. It was very, it was a very, very different kinds of uh, circumstances. Um, but not just in Bosnia, I feel that this is sort of a trend that we see across um, the, the region and, and other other European countries as well. Um, yeah, in Croatia, it's, it's a, I think it's okay situation. They they find some partners because it's it's a, still in, in Europe to 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 have a, a co-production in between countries or Asia or, or European country. But we, we have a, in Euro, European we have a, a Euroimage fund. We have a media fund, and that that is that is. A, a, Give, give. We must have a, 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 a partners to take that funds, uh, uh, European and uh, and. But in in Croatia and Serbia, it's a total different situation. They have a big bigger budget. Fund. Yeah, bigger, much bigger fund than Bosnia. And so Thank you, Olin. And uh, we have also a question from the audience uh, now that uh, I'm going to read. So. Um, Isla is asking, I'm not sure where Isla is writing to us from. Uh, so yeah, if you're a member of the audience, uh, please type in your questions in the chat box in the Eventive and we will share them with our guests uh, and write us maybe where you are writing from. Uh, so Isla is asking, I would like to ask Ines about Amran's mother and what is the reason that he was abandoned and later adopted? Oh, Ines, you're, you're muted. If you could just click the un, unmute button. Uh, I uh, didn't answer that in film because many of these ch children that was adopted don't know why the parents adopted, uh, uh, not adopted, why the parents abandoned uh, the child. So the beginning of the film is uh, in the middle of his struggling uh why he is uh, abounded and he wanted to find who the, his mother is and uh it was my uh decision that we enter the film in the uh, highest level of the of his raging uh energy so uh he was adopted because he was abounded so uh uh, we, we are entering in the film uh, uh, with the last uh, disappointment, disappoint, disappointed. Uh, Armand was disappointed again from his uh, biological mother. And it was the highest uh, point in the film. And after that, the film was uh, going slowly down. I, I Actually, it was like, uh, Ulix and I uh, um, discussing the, the the film dramaturgy, and in one point he said to me, uh, "It is always interesting to make a film that uh, have something on the beginning which is very um, strong, and then afterwards that goes uh, slower and slower." And I was thinking about that, and when I Put this kind of dramaturgy. It was actually because we 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 talking about that. So I really wanted to go uh, in the film film in media stress, as to say, and then that we see how he how the the boy dealing with his problem till the end, and how he slowly understand that the happiness is not outside this family that this family give him all the life, lo love he need. So I don't know what is with his biological mother. I, because it is not important for this, this story. Thank you, Ines. And by the way, Anna, who asked this question, also wrote that she is from Massachusetts, originally from Banja Luka. Um, Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to also add it in a way, not uh, explaining or not giving that background story of the mother also mirrors what what uh, the child's own experience is. He doesn't know this, right? So this is not part of his own story. So why should the 
uh, spectator uh, be privy to that information when he has to find a way uh, to, uh, like you said, return to his family that raised him, to the parents who are his parents because they raised him. Um, and uh, in in light of that, I actually had a question for all of you, and uh, uh, maybe Snezhna and Lux can chime in. I saw the, the even though the film de deals with heavy themes of youth delinquency, um, searching for oneself, there's a lot of um, uh, things around the corner lurking, dangerous vices and whatnot, and, and one doesn't have to be a parent, but for us who are parents in particular, that is, uh, uh, that resonates even more, uh, perhaps. Um, uh, I did see the ending of the film as hopeful, um, it was that deliberate, and I uh, wanted to ask Snezhna and Ulix if they saw it this way as well, and maybe also comment on your different characters' trajectory towards um, uh, talking to each other about parenting and love towards one's child, um, and how, uh, whether you perhaps meet and find um, a common ground at the end, because at different points in the film there was some tension between how the two of you saw um, your relationship to your adopted adopted son. Ines, do you want to go first? About... Uh, Hopeful ending? Yeah, yeah. For, uh, ending, for me, I al al always want to have a light on the end, because uh, I, I uh, lead whole film till this end, that we understand on the, on the end. It, because if he is not uh, realized that the film have no point, then he he struggled whole this film and wanted to find who he, his biological mother is and uh, hold the problem he have uh, on the end of the film we have to have a point that uh, he realized that he had everything uh, in in already in his life because when he Throw, throw away a uh, uh, gun, we understand that he finished with all this uh, old, life. Old, old life before. So for me is absolutely clearly, even though I put the younger brother on the minefield, because I want to, to, to tell that we are still on the same mind where the Dan Stanovich character is on because the Bosnia is still on this same mind. And this is of course metaphor that everybody don't see, but for me it was very important that uh, this minefield is actually metaphorically, even though we have this minefield uh, around the Sarajevo still, and it's not, uh, it's not, uh, impossible to, to be in minefield uh, uh, around Sarajevo. So uh, it was really well meant every, every part of the film. And what I want to say uh, about the production, that this, fo th this film was made with such a low budget uh, in 19 shooting days and we have so many scenes that we have um, Mindestan's um, uh, on two, uh, even three scenes per day. So my, my, my directing, uh, uh, I, I choose this style, one, one shot, one scene is because I couldn't on the other way shoot in, in 90 days. So when we are thinking about the shooting and about how to manage all the characters, we have uh, over 70 characters in the film. Also we have dog, we have a tram, we have a, a car, we have a cable car, we have a pistol, we have everything what is hard for, for shooting in, in organization way, in production way. So we managed to put everything in that 19, 20 days. That was the shooting time, 19, 20 days? The shooting yeah. Time? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
uh, Snezhna well, Novik, do you want to uh, quickly comment on that question about the uh, uh, different trajectories towards parenting that your characters were going through and the hopeful ending? Um, well, I have to say that I'm really grateful that uh, Ines opened this conversation and uh, put this story under the light. Um, you know, there's no such a thing as a perfect parenthood. And we all make mis mistakes all the time, you know, and we all try our best. I believe in that. And I believe that every parent wants the best for their kids. But the question is, you know, how open we are and how are we able to reflect on our mistakes? And, you know, I think there is, no, there is no, how would I say, we all try our best, as I said, but, uh, you know, sometimes our best is not enough to bring the peace and understanding uh, into our families. So with this story, we as parents also had a chance and an opportunity to think about our own actions. To me, for me as a parent, you know, of course I don't have an experience, but I think there is no difference uh, uh, between being a, a biological parent or adoptive parent. And uh, also, as I said, I don't have experience because uh, the love is a common thing for both situations, for both experiences. And uh, if sometimes the love itself is not enough, you know, and this is, this is why this movie and this story for me was important to tell. And that's why I'm really, uh, how would I say? And the story that was told from woman's point of view also, uh, I think that uh, as a parent, you know, Ulix and me sometimes, and it's normal, uh, I have diff different approaches to how we uh, see the problem, to how we talk to our child, how open we are. Uh, are we ready to listen, you know, because uh, uh, we often pity ourselves as parent parents and we often uh, want to excuse ourselves for our mistakes, which I can understand, but... Uh, I wouldn't, how would I say, I, I wouldn't agree with, I wouldn't support you, and I would encourage them. This movie should actually encourage the, all the parents to be uh, 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 more present in their kids' lives today, because it's difficult enough to raise a child today under the circumstances uh, 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 of, you know, post-war, bad economy, uh, struggling financially, families. Uh, and then on top of it, you know, when a teenager is, they're going through, you know, through crisis, you know, and, and it's, it, it, it's a huge uh, uh, challenge for them and for every family. So uh, just to talk about this, it's, 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 I think it's, uh, it's really important. We also... Um have another comment from uh, one of the one of our viewers and also a question which we can use as our last question because we're nearing the end here. Um, a comment from Tom, that's such a beautiful question about the ending. Diana, I worried that Arman may have done irreparable harm to his relationship with Dada with the game of Russian roulette. And then Isla followed up also that she wanted to congratulate the whole team on creating such a beautiful movie. The scenes of Sarajevo and architecture are wonderful. I'm wondering how you selected the specific places, especially the house. So we can handle that. Uh, this is my favorite question, uh, but nobody raises it <laughs> before. <laughs> and I'm so happy that somebody uh, tell it finally, because I, I spent whole summer for choosing all, all, uh, all location because for me, I'm in love in, with Sarajevo and I wanted in this film really to show the best view on Sarajevo because in every Bosnian film, you always see gray, snow, 
what is uh, uh, not wealthy but uh, uh, ugly because we are always uh, shown as a Balkan people and I wanted to show really this kind of of our side some uh, middle class intellectual family which is never in the middle of the film as a main character so I, I second in my second film I uh, wanted again to make uh, this note so when I choose this uh, I really choose every spot in the film uh, scenography uh, costumography, everything was under my control because I wanted everything to be perfect and uh, uh, everything is in, at sunny day, you never have a other day that sunny day in this film because I wanted on the bigger plan that it is the contrapunct because we have a contrapunct, we have a beautiful scene, beautiful weather, everything is beautiful, but inner, in the character, you have a struggle and uh, uh, everything what is a uh, uh, problem is inner. So I wanted really to make this counterpoint and the house, uh, we are trying to the find- The house is spent half budget. Yes, half, half budget. <laughs> I was struggling with, uh, with uh, my producer. He said to me, no, this house, no. And I said, yes, because it was ruined house, absolutely ruined, with nothing in there. And we really make Potemkin. We make uh, uh, everything fake. But I wanted to have this, because this is one of the maybe latest house, uh, Bosnian house as they are, because uh, other houses are renovated, you know, in messing, in, in, in new stuff. And this is not the, the, the spirit of Bosnian Mahala. So I wanted this house, even it is ruined, and I uh, choose every spot in this house, how, where we, will be the, the kitchen, which color, which color of the, of the, uh, of the walls, and we even uh, invent the bathroom. The bathroom we don't have, and uh, uh, art um, designer makes stickers in uh, like uh, like tails. It wasn't the real tails. It is stickers on the wall, it, and everything is fa false. Nothing is the real, and we even have this wall. Uh, for uh, which can be moved uh, that we put the camera because I wanted everything in more plans that I have everything through the through the shot that I have third plan second plan and afterwards that they come in the first plan so everything was really absolutely in every details was uh, chosen by me because I wanted everything under my control to have this how that it will look like and everything. Well, Thank I'm you. glad that we that our last question is happened to just by chance be Ines's favorite question. Uh, the house, uh, just uh, keeping in line with the intergenerational story, the house is both the the old and the new, the mixture of the old and the new in really amazing ways. So that's that uh, adds to the story in really um, insightful ways. Um, with this, we want to conclude this conversation once again on behalf of BHFF. Want to thank you all for being uh, here tonight and also for being friends of the festival for many years now, um, uh, for supporting us in this virtual um, edition as well. Uh, we can't wait to see what uh, new things you do and host you again, Ines and Alim, with your uh, work. Uh, and speaking of what comes next, we will actually have Snezhna again a couple of days from now, I believe, uh, for a Q&A on Stitches or Shavovi, uh, which is an incredible film that we recommend. And Ulix was uh, one of the producers of the film. Uh, Amir, do you want to say something about Yes, this? I just wanted no, to... Can I, can, I, can, I, can I say something just before Amir goes on? Go ahead, Both go ahead, Ulix. Diana, to you and Amir, I really think that you guys are doing an amazing job. I, I, you know, I, I think that all of us enjoy this conversation uh, very much. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was... Uh, more like a little uh, uh, 
debate and reflection on the time uh, that, you know, and, the, and that we live in rather than, you know, some sort of a film gathering. So thank you very much for uh, getting us together back with Alan and Ines. Uh, I really was happy uh, to see them and you guys are doing an amazing job, really. I, I mean it honestly. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you very thank much. You. And we hope to see you again in live. Absolutely. In person, we will in have person. a person in <laughs> yes. New York or in Sarajevo or who knows where. But thank you all. And, and yeah, it was like a little therapy session. Yes. <laughs> we'll leave right about now. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for your thoughts. I'm just going to remind the audience to please don't forget to vote. Uh, all of these films are uh, eligible for the audience award. So when you watch, if you haven't watched the film yet and you're seeing the Q&A, please, uh, after you watch, you'll get uh, a note to vote for these films because they will all, one of these films will receive an audience award. So don't forget. To, uh, and I hope you join us for our next Q&A, which is tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Thank you again to Ines to Alem, Snezhana, and Ulix, and thank you all thank for Thank you, thanks thank for you. us. Good night. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.